मानुष टोटी फोर सत्य खोजे सत्य नमस्कार खोज टोटी फोर अपने स्वागत प्रत्येके मनुष्य जीवन एक जिन निश्चित से मृत्यु मृत्यु जो निश्चित तक तर क्यों परिकल्पना करब ना हाँ ये सुनते एक रकम लागे क्योंकि ना आज के जार कथा शुन से डर अभिजित दाम बोकारोते उन्नी एक जगह खुजे पेखने कोशिश बांगलो बोल हस्पिटल बोलो ना ठीक वो एक हस्पिस जेखने दुरारोग्य व्याधिर मानुषे शेष टाइम ओखने गए थे तरा खूब हासि मुखे तर जीवन अतिबात करें चलू पुरो बेपार शुने नी अभिजित दाम मुख थे Hello, welcome to Koshish. Uh, my name is Dr. Abhijit Abhijit Dam, and uh, I am an anesthesiologist by profession and intensivist. So I used to do a lot of intensive care work. Uh, that was my passion, intensive care. But then uh, over the time, watching uh, patients die very lonely, very painful, very undignified deaths in the ICU, that got me thinking. because i personally feel that one should not die in pain or in loneliness or in suffering so that made me change the way that i looked at death and that i looked at life and uh, over the period i switched to palliative care and that is how koshish was born koshish uh, is the first hospice in a rural setting in india now what makes koshish so special it started uh, way back in 2004 it was basically love at first sight you know me and uh, a couple of like minded people we used to travel all the way almost a distance of 50 kilometers from where i work uh, to the adjoining state of west bengal uh, to a little village in purulia district of west bengal where we used to go and uh, you know uh, do conduct health camps for the rural elderly and while traveling to and fro i used to see this piece of land which was almost you know uh, built like uh, as they say kachua ka peat ki tarah like a tortoise shell and there was a little river running by it and there was a uh, old building uh, maybe of the british times out there so somehow that was love at first sight and uh, what i felt at that time was this is the place that i would love to die this is the place where i would love to spend the last days of my life because you see death also requires a lot of planning and that is something we don't do at all we don't plan for our deaths you know but death requires a lot of planning you know planning some investments and that is how koshish began because i fell in love with this place so i thought that why not construct a hospice uh, come long term care facility out here because you see as we grow old and statistics do confirm that that the last 2 to 3 years of our life if we die of old age basically the last 2 to 3 years of our life everybody requires some support some support from other people now the question is who is going to provide that support to you because everybody is busy in their own affairs and it's a fragmented family nowadays so who is going to provide that support and this got me thinking and so i created this first rural based long term care facility and then started practicing palliative care out here so we work pro bono we have no access to funding whatsoever and since 2004 the lord has been very kind and uh, we have been managing you know that way uh, friends sometimes they pitch in with small donations and that keeps us going our morale is quite high and over the period of time this whole area grew and uh, i am proud to say that this had become the secretariat of the indian association of palliative care also for 3 years and this was the first secretariat of a national body to be in a rural setting and then i went out uh, ahead to found the national association of palliative care for ayush and integrative medicine and uh, then i introduced the first 
death daula culturally appropriate death daula course in india called the international death daula foundation the course was called farishte and this hall where we are sitting right now uh, this is where we usually conduct our classes so my idea was to look at death from a different angle because death uh, cannot just be medicalized you know death is more of a cultural event it's more of a social uh, thing it's got religious uh, connotations and so on and so forth so we need to have a blend of everything it is a wholesome thing it's a it's a very social and cultural con concept death and dying and death you see is the only guarantee that you would have in your life because death is the only thing that comes with a guarantee so planning for our last days of life becomes very important and that is where koshish comes in and in addition over the periods i tried to create a workforce of rural women who would take care of us when or who would take care of the bedridden patients you know terminally ill patients bedridden patients so we started uh, training the rural women out here over a period of 6 months and uh, the seventh batch just recently passed out and we are in the process of uh, admission of the eighth batch of students of uh, rural women and all of them get employment most of them get employment it's a different thing that many do not want to leave this place and go to larger cities they prefer to stay back here prakritir kole shesh jibon otibahito prakritir thekei amader srishti prakritir kachei chole jaba ei niye uni kichu kaj korchen ei kaj ta ke amra sadubad janai ebong shotti kotha onek manush kintu ete khub happy bodh korchen cholun tader kichu kotha shuni ami actually ekhane ashi keno main uddeshyo holo ami prothom prothom ekta berate ashi nodir pashe जंगल बे सुंदर लगता परिवेश पर जानते कैंसार इत्यादि ट्रिटमेंट मिसेस तो कैंसार रुगी छे तक डाक्टर उसे आलाप है और तीन हमारे जेत ट्रिटमेंट हमें देखल जो जार द्वारा हमारे मिसेस कोकम मैं व्यथा जंत्रणा बोध करें से समय थे व्यलिटी जिनटार ऊपर हमारे এটা বিশেষ ধারণা জানবে যে এতে মানুষের তো কষ্ট হয় না অথচ মানুষকে যেতেই হবে সবাই জানে মানুষকে যেতে হবে কারণ ক্যান্সার থেকে কোনো মুক্তি নেই কিন্তু বাড়ি আমরা হসপিটালে ভর্তি করলে কি গুচ্ছের টাকা যায় প্লাস যন্ত্রণাটাও ভোগ করতে হয় কিন্তু এখানে সেইটা হয় না লাস্ট মোমেন্টে এখানে এসে জীবনটা কাটানো সবচাইতে উত্তম এইটাই আমরা চিন্তা করি তারপর এখানে এসে এই পরিবেশ দেখে আমার বা পাঁচটা লোকের কীভাবে তাদের সেবা কোথা করা হচ্ছে সেটা দেখে আমার খুব ভালো লাগে তখন আমি ডিসাইড করি যে আমার শেষ জীবনটা এইভাবেই কাটিয়ে দিই আমার মিসেস চলে যাওয়ার পর তখন আমি সমস্ত আমার যা ছিল থাকার বাড়ি যে বাড়ি সব বিক্রি করে দিই আমি এখানে চলে আসি এখন একটা রুম নিয়ে আমি এখানে আছি এবং সেখানে থাকি এবং সেখানে নানান রকম পেশেন্ট আছে তাদের দেখি তাদের যতটা আমার দ্বারা সাহায্য করা সম্ভব হয় শরীর দিয়ে তাদের সাহায্য করি এটা ওটা তাদের গল্প শোনায় গল্প শুনি তাদের কাছে অনেক তাদের জীবনের কথা শুনি আমার জীবনের অভিজ্ঞতার কথা কিছু কিছু জানাই বেশ ভালো লাগে সময়টা ক্যারিয়ার কেটে যায় সো অ্যাজ ইউ ওয়াক অ্যারাউন্ড আওয়ার ক্যাম্পাস দ্য ফার্স্ট থিং উইচ ইউ সি ইজ এ ভেরি ওল্ড অলমোস্ট ব্রোকেন ডাউন বিল্ডিং উইচ ইজ অলমোস্ট এ হান্ড্রেড ইয়ার্স ওল্ড অ্যান্ড দ্য এক্স্যাক্ট হিস্ট্রি নো বডি নোজ uh some people say that it was uh, part of the american regiment uh, of soldiers those soldiers who had come all the way from south africa perhaps you know so this is a broken down building and uh, some say that it was used as a stable for horses also uh and in housed within that building is something which i i you know to begin with i was a atheist a very strong atheist i never believed in god and all but then one day while sitting in that old uh, building i was literally forced there was a different type of force which actually got me up sat me up and then i went around the whole area and this there was a strong compulsive thought within it literally forcing me to install the idol of shakti out there in the form of kali which i did and that was the first 
temple which came up here now you can just attribute this to mere chance but i don't think anything happens by chance everything is pre-planned out but that was how the first temple came into being as if somebody had literally forced me into it and that was the last day that i was an atheist i am a strong believer now but then you know addressing the sufferings of my terminally ill patients often brought up religious issues and i was absolutely unprepared to address those religious issues because i had absolutely no idea about religion and then i started studying up religion i studied hinduism vedanta i spent one year studying vedanta then i uh, read up compassionate practices of buddhism and then i went ahead further to train in ritualism because most of the people out here they belong to the local villages and they do believe in ritualism so ritualism is a very strong hope giving strategy so as a part of the ritualistic protocols then my second temple came up and that is of another form of shakti which we call the varahi amma temple and this temple which is housed in koshish is the first varahi amma temple in the states of bihar and jharkhand combined maybe even chatisgarh this is the first and the only temple of varahi amma and then the third temple was created again as if by chance and that was a temple of lord shiva so we had shakti and then we had the shiva the yang and in to balance it out and then the fourth temple which is the chosat yogini which is again a form of shakti the chosat yogini temple of which only three such temples exist in the whole of india so the chosat yogini temple came into being and then as we move around if you go to the uh, river bank now the river bank out here is uh, is a very strong it's a very powerful place because there is a lot of energy out there and persons who practice meditation would understand what i'm trying to say that area is filled with a lot of powerful energy and if you spend if you care to spend a few minutes of your time alone out there just focusing on your own mind you can understand what i'm trying to tell you so such is the power of this place it's got very powerful vibrations should you choose to perceive them and then if you go to the other end of the campus we have recently uh you know we started construction and almost finished the construction of a new wing which we want to dedicate it as an old age home or a residential of a or of a new residential hospice now the funding for this actually came from my uh grandmother in law she was a widow and uh, after and she donated all her savings to koshish so that we could build this building and that building is uh, ready today and uh, this is what i can tell you about this place and surrounding areas are also give out very positive vibes satyanand ji maharaj if you remember him he was the yoga guru out there called this whole area as chita bhumi because this whole area was so very laden with energy should you choose to tap into them so this whole area this whole area with the adjoining parts of purulia and jharkhand uh, is filled with small temples often lost temples people uh, practicing certain uh, special ritualisms integrated as a whole this can give rise to a totally uh, different type of experience should you choose to imbibe those so uh, 
if you are interested to come out here and spend a few days out here you're more than welcome and uh, at the end of this video you'll be given a few numbers and a few email IDs where you can contact us and uh, this place is uh, just uh, around uh, 25 kilometers away from Pururulia railway station or from Bukaro steel city railway station so either you can come by train or you can take a bus directly to Purulia or Bukaro steel city and uh, come here or if you are coming you want to come by flight the nearest airport is Rachi which is around 120 kilometers away the roads are very very good and uh, we are bang right on NH uh, 32 and uh, if you google us we are located on google maps as well and uh, that's about it you're welcome to, to come here khosh 24 satyer khoje satyer sathe jodi eta amra kokhono bhabini amra amader jokhon mittu nischit keno amra er jonno sundor porikalpona korbo na Dr. Obiji Damal Kache, a Gantamra Nilam, a Shikatamra Nilam, or Onik Kichui Shikuni Ache, Tarkasteke, Hotoporoti Kalamra, Onik Kichui Jante Parvo. Ask Kibuji, Abar Dakabe, Onokon Shandanye, next episode, Namaskar.